All right, everybody, welcome back to your Godcast. It's been a while, but uh, we're going to get back into the swing of things, and we're talking about theoretical probability today. And theoretical probability is just the whole idea of what should happen in a certain situation when you're giving a, uh, a certain amount of criteria to deal with. Um, it's just the idea of what should happen. doesn't mean it's going to happen exactly how we figure it out, but in most cases, it's how it should. And what we're going to use for this today is just a simple spinner like so. Um, so as you can see, round, round goes where it stops, all that stuff. Um, so we've got four spaces here. We have green, we have yellow, we have red, and we have blue. So what we need to do first is we need to sort of take a look at how this spinner is divided up. And as we can see, it's divided up into four sections, okay? So automatically, we have to put this into a fractional sense, all right? Each color is going to be out of four. All right, so green, the probability of gr getting green is one out of four. The probability of getting blue is one out of four. The probability of red is one out of four. And the probability of orange is one out of four. We don't have an orange pen, so we're just going to use black. All right, so if we figure this into decimals, and I'm going to bring up our handy calculator here, all we do is we divide the top number by the bottom number, and all the fractions are the same, so obviously it's all going to be the same. So we go 1 divided by 4, and that gives us 0.25, so a 25% chance of getting each color, all right? So these are important numbers for us to remember, so we're just going to write them down. So the question may arise. If you spin the spinner a certain amount of times, how many times should you get each color? All right. So, in the case of uh, our spinner here, we're going to say if the spinner is spun 150 times, how many times should we get each color? All right. So that's the magic number, is 150. All right. So all you're going to do is you're going to multiply the decimal that we have by 150 for each color. So in the case of green, we're going to bring up our calculator, um, and we're going to multiply by that number. I closed it down, so I'm just going to bring it up very quickly here. All right. So if we take our decimal number, which is 0.25, and we multiply it by the number of times we're spinning, this is telling us that approximately 37.5 times we should get each number, okay? Obviously, we can't get a decimal, so you would round up. So we're looking at about, or approximately, um, 38 times we'll get each number, or each color, all right? So that's how that works. Now, we're going to switch up our spinner a little bit and see how that plays with our numbers, all right? So uh, the great thing about the smart board is all these things are completely uh, changeable. Okay, let's make it a bit bigger first of all. So we see how we can change all of our colors. So we're going to make our yellow text color, our orange text color, a green one. All right? So now, all of a sudden, our statistics are going to change a little bit. Okay? Because we now have green, two green spaces. Let's get rid of, um, well, let's just get rid of the green one. All right? So, rather than one out of four chances to get green, we now have two out of four, okay? Remember that this top number is favorable outcomes. I think I spelled that wrong. And the bottom is possible outcomes. That's why under each fraction we have four, because there are four possible outcomes, okay? So that's going to change things up a little bit. Now instead, of now, instead of doing 150 times, we're going to change it, and we're going to say 200 times, okay? So that magic number is going to change, okay? So again, if we bring up our calculator, 
It's just a matter of, first of all, recognizing that 2 out of 4 no longer equals 25%. It equals 50%, okay, or 0.5. So this is pretty easy math. 50% of 200 is 100. So we know that we should be getting green 100 times when we multiply 200 times 0.5, okay? Blue, we're going to bring up our calculator. We're going to go 0.25 times 200 and see that 50 times is what we should be getting for blue. And obviously it's going to be the same for red. And this guy at the bottom doesn't apply anymore. So we'll just get rid of it altogether. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to choose a lower number and we're going to see if our probabilities match up. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all of this. We're going to get rid of this and rather than 200 we're going to say 10 spins. Okay, so remember green is 2 out of 4. 0 0.50. Red is 1 out of 4, so that equals 0 0.25. And blue is 1 out of 4, and that also equals 0 0.25. Okay, so according to this, approximately half of our spins should re result in green. So we have 5. And approximately 2.5 of the other spins should be these guys. So we're looking at about three, all right? Let's give or take a little bit. So let's just conduct this experiment and see. So we spin. So one out of one is green. One out of two is green. Two out of three is green. All right, two out of four is green. So we're almost at our quota for red. Three out of five is green. All right, so we're at our quota for red. We have three out of six for green. No blues yet. We have four out of seven for green. Three more spins to go, so we need to start getting some blue here. We have five out of Eight for green, so we're at our quota for green. So theoretically, the rest should be blue. That's nine spins. And for our tenth spin, we land on red. So theoretically, we are a little bit off, um, but you sort of get the picture there. So that's the whole idea behind theoretical probability. It's what should happen, not necessarily what does happen. So let's take a look at what we've learned today. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned a whole bunch of things. First of all, we learned that probability should always be put into a fraction, because from there we can turn it into a decimal. Um, and that's also just going to tell us, you know, how many different chances out of the total number of outcomes we have to get a certain uh, outcome, a favorable outcome. Um, so favorable outcome on top, total outcomes on the bottom. Secondly, we need to calculate the decimals. So you take the top number, divide by the bottom number, and that's going to give you a decimal. Then if you multiply that number by 100, then you get the percentage of chances that you have of getting that favorable outcome. All right? Uh, thirdly, we learned that you have to multiply the decimal, not the percentage, by the number of trials. For example, if they want to know how many outcomes, uh, out, how many certain outcomes you'll get out in 100 tries, then you're going to multiply that decimal by 100, and that's going to give you the number. Lastly, we have to remember that theoretical probability is approximate, okay? It's not an exact science, so it might happen, it might not. There's always a chance that the, you know, other outcomes may come up, but it's theoretical, so it could possibly happen. And that's about it. So if you have any questions, as always, you're invited to come and talk to me. That's why I'm here. Um, probability is fun, but can be confusing as well. So I hope that helps. Uh, later days, and I'll see you guys in class.